Like we are discussing in the previous lecture, we have to create an client details and user details so that we can start leveraging them inside what to framework that we are going to implement in the scenario where like a web application trying to invoke the APIs present inside a resource server. So for the same, I came to the key clock admin console. The realm can be same easy bank dev. So I'm just clicking clients. So I'm trying to create a new client. That's why I'm clicking create here. So here client ID, I will give easy UI client. And definitely this also has to be open ID connect and I'll click save. So here we have to be very careful while choosing the options. Since we decided we have to use authorization code grant type, it is by default enabled, which is standard flow enabled. So you can see here, this is the one which supports authorization code flow grant type inside or to framework. And definitely access type should be confidential because you will have a client ID and client secret. So with this configurations, we should be good, but we just have to add valid redirect URI also. For now, I'll just mention a sample redirect URI, which is HTTP local host 8081 slash sample. So you can give any redirect URI for now, but in real world scenario, this is the important configuration that you have to configure properly. The reason is your key clock server will redirect the user after providing an access token to the redirect page. So this is the page which will stop hackers from hacking the access token because by mentioning the redirect URI, you are bringing back the user from the key clock over to server page to your own server page. So that's why valid redirect URI is very important. For now, I just configure localhost 8081 sample. So with this, we should be good with all the default configurations. I'm just clicking save here and I should have got credentials also. So we have credentials. Now we created a successful client that I can use during OR2 authorization code grant type. So now I need an user also. So I'll create add user here. Username I'll give accounts. Email is accounts at the rate easybytes.com. So the first name is accounts. Last name is easybytes. So here you also have an flexibility whether user should be enabled or disabled. Like if you have a scenario where you want to disable an user, you can use this switch to enable and disable by toggling it. Or you can also do that by invoking rest APIs exposed by the key clock. So for now I am keeping the user enabled and email verified also I'm keeping. Yes. I also have an option of adding him to a group, but for now I don't want to add to any group. I'm just clicking save. So once the user is created, you can go to credentials. To set a password which can be used as a temporary or permanent ways. So I'm just setting a password 12345. So this password I don't want to be temporary. I want to be a permanent. If you keep temporary, it will force the user to change it whenever they are trying to log in very first time. So now since it is for just only for testing, I just disable the temporary to off. And role mapping also we can give. So we have two types of roles, admin and user. So I'm just selecting add selected and I assign roles also to the user that I have created just now, which is accounts. So we can go and see all the users created, which is accounts. Like these are all the details that we have provided username, email, first name, user enabled, email verified and credentials. Also, we set one, two, three, four, five previously. But if you want to change again and again, you can come onto the page and change role mappings will allow you to assign roles to the user. So this way we created a client and user details which we can use during authorization code grant type flow. In the next lecture, let's try to leverage these client details and user details and test the OR2 authorization code grant type first with the postman post that we can start integrating that with an web application. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.